Um, my name is Robin Nelson and I'm a biological anthropologist and I'm incoming faculty at Santa Clara University in the fall of 2016. I work on child growth and development in the Caribbean and I'm specifically interested in issues around parental investment and child growth. So what does it look like when parents don't have resources to invest? How do they mediate that lack of resources and how does it influence uh, nutritional status in kids at different stages of their life? I, like many students of color, was a pre-med student as an undergrad, and I was very interested in issues around health equity and access to resources, and I didn't know that I could think about those questions in biological anthropology. I took, I was taking all of my pre-med requirements, and I took one, actually, linguistic anthropology class, and we read Kanzi. And I didn't know that biological anthropologists studied non-human primates. And when I found that out and then figured out everything else biological anthropologists study, it was a natural fit for me to actually abandon my pre-med pursuits and get involved in biological anthropology. And so by the end of that academic year, which was my junior year in college, I knew that I was probably going to go to grad school for biological anthropology. I am fascinated by the ways that humans figure out how to make things work. That is basically the core of my research. So how do people come together to form families in, uh, when experiencing risk? How do they make it work when they don't have the resources that they need? And much of that is culturally contextualized so that the way people make it work in Jamaica is not necessarily the way people are going to make it work in Toronto or the way that they're going to make it work amongst the Chimani of Bolivia. And so that variability around the world uh, fascinates me, absolutely fascinates me. And I'm, I love the fact that we get to go all over the world and learn about these things. And it's incredibly hard. Um, but it's, a, it's rewarding, and, and when you actually have those data, uh, you get to learn amazing things. I've been surprised at how, and maybe this, this seems simple and clear cut, but how central women are to the functioning of children's lives. When we say that, we always talk about mothers, we talk about the central importance of mothers, and everyone kind of takes it for granted. But when you actually look at the nuts and bolts of the data, oftentimes when mothers are removed, the kids suffer tremendously. And so we, think, we can think about this from an evolutionary perspective as the centrality of the mother-infant dyad, and we talk a lot about that in humans, and we talk a lot about that in non-human primates. But it turns out to be the case around the world. And so we can think about the way gender roles then kind of go on, can map on top of reproductive biology, but there's a lot of cultural context there that complicates things. One of the challenges that I think about quite a bit um, is increasing interest and retention amongst uh, students of color. And we have a long legacy, as do many academic disciplines, but biological anthropology specifically, of institutional racism. And it is hard to bring in students of color who are often very aware of uh, structural inequalities within their communities into a discipline that has this history, even if the dynamics within the discipline are such that we are pushing against those narratives and working quite actively to construct new ways of thinking about these questions, students don't necessarily know this, but these are lived oral histories in communities of color. We know the way in which biomedicine has been used against communities of color. And so I think a lot about how do I let students know that if this stuff is interesting to them, they can engage in it and have their soul. They're not selling out in some way by engaging in biological anthropology. There are ways to, act, to ask really challenging and important questions, questions that are salient for our communities and be a biological anthropologist. Sometimes in academe, we get very comfortable feeling as though we know things and we're not always able to question our shortcomings. And one of our shortcomings is our around, our, some of our shortcomings are around gender equity 
and, and representation of, of uh, minority scholars. And I think that we need to think very critically about the kinds of research we put out, about how we message our research to the public, um, and how we recruit students even beginning K through 12. And I think that if we can really think critically about how to better position ourselves as public scholars, we will have a better chance at uh, improving our retention of women and people of color within the discipline.